is good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today we have another tutorial for you guys much like egghead finn balor not going to be the same probably not as epic as egghead finn balor but i think that you guys will learn something here and i think it's pretty cool fig hack slash things you can do with your wwe action figures that is pretty nice i freaking love it and i discovered this yesterday you know i was just kind of chilling around with face wife hanging around being a you know just just being a great husband you know just just freaking loving life and then it all of a sudden hit me i was sitting there looking at my john cena and i said you know what brad that chain gang's chain is just way too stiff man i mean it's so stiff look at this right here i mean look at it it's made of plastic this is the one mattel gave us with the first defining moments john cena one of my favorite mattel figures they've ever made and uh you guys can see it's molded in plastic it doesn't have any free form you've seen it on mdt live guys you know it's got it's it's made of molded plastic you know it's very stiff when it goes around the neck it doesn't free form or flow like a real chain and it's totally just it, it's just not good stuff man right so it's not good so what I did was I went to Hobby Lobby. I, I told you guys in, I can't remember what video I told you guys in. It may have even been the last video I posted in figure surgery when we talked about this figure. I think it was. I think I said at the beginning of that video, I said, today I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby and we're going to try and find a chain for this chain gang uh, chain. Uh, slash necklace, pendant, whatever you want to call it. And so I did that. I went there, me and Face Wife went up there, and we got it, and we got the little chain there. And so I bought a little chain, I cut it up, and I cut the uh, the chain game pendant from the chain that uh, Mattel gave us, and then I attached it to this chain, and this is what we're stuck with, guys. Look at this right here. It hangs freely. You guys saw it on Instagram. I put a before and after photo, which I'll pull up right now, and you guys will see exactly what we did. We took that terrible, awful plastic, and we uh, we redid it and we remade it and now we have a chain gang pendant on an actual chain and don't worry about the color right now I know the color isn't perfect I'm going to actually uh, I put a silver coat of paint on it but I'm going to actually uh, go in here with some spray paint some silver spray paint spray paint over it and actually give it the accurate color to this I don't know if you guys can completely tell on camera but anyways um, this is much more accurate man and it looks so good I'm really really pleased with the way it came out and I'm gonna pull up a picture of the chain gang pendant you guys will see what it's supposed to look like um, NRL this is supposed to spin and stuff but since it's molded out of plastic there's there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I really don't know what I could do to, you know, do that. I know Jax made one, but it was much bigger than this, and so I wanted to make my own Mattel scale one, and I'm pretty freaking, uh, I'm pretty excited for it, man, and we're, today we're going to show you exactly how I did it, and hopefully I'll be able to go through the process. I have a little bit of chain left, and I'm going to redo the process with uh, with his Word Life chain that came with the second Defining Moments John Cena, and it looks good, man. It looks good around the neck. I really do love it. I know I've said it many times already, but I really do. I think it looks really good, and I'm excited, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this word life chain which is again the one that came with the uh what is it called the, the the second defining moments john cena which shouldn't have even been a defining moments figure but i loved it anyways i bought like five of them i have like a bunch in the box over there we've done fix-ups customs with it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to use the leftover chain that i have and see if i can redo this exact process with this chain hopefully it's long enough and I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we'll see. We'll see what goes down. And one thing that's actually different is this one actually has a clasp on it, you know, so it can actually go around his neck and hook. And I could undo it if I wanted to, but on this chain, there's actually no clasp. So the way I'm going to have to do it is I'm actually going to have to cut it twice. Once, one to hold the pendant and one side to uh, hook around and hook to the other side of the chain. So that's probably going to be a nightmare, but you know what? We're going we're gonna to attempt it. Again, I don't know how successful this is going to be. It could end up being an epic failure, but we'll have to see how it goes but anyways let's go ahead and break down the process guys so starting things off guys what you will need for this process i don't think you'll need the thumbtack for this this experiment with this chain uh, where the hell did I put? okay i got it so what i don't think you'll need a uh, thumbtack for this one because you can actually see there's a hole here i had to use the thumbtack so i could actually poke a hole in this chain gang chain pendant right here at the top so i could actually run you know a piece of the necklace through there, so I don't think you'll need a thumbtack, but that's just something extra. Maybe if you're making the chain gang one, you'll need the thumbtack, but uh, that is there for extra use. We have the trusty knife. You guys haven't seen the MDT trusty knife in a little bit, but uh, I did use it for this. We also have some scissors, and we have some needle nose pliers. You don't need to have needle nose. I just like needle nose better. I do have the alternative right here, which you could also use, so we have both of those, and so uh, yeah, so that's the tools you'll need to maneuver the chain, all that good stuff. 
Um, I'm going to try and pull up a picture of the exact chain I bought from Hobby Lobby, but I don't know the brand name and I don't know any of that ish, but here it is right here. And so what I did was, uh, this was attached to that one, but of course after cutting it and molding it around and uh, using it to make, like I had to customize the chain a little bit. So I'm gonna use this, and again, I don't know how long this is. It's probably not even gonna be long enough, but it doesn't have to be as long as that one because the Chain Gang chain is actually, you guys will notice here, let's go ahead and look at the Mattel one. It's not as long as the other one, so maybe maybe it won't matter that much. But anyways, we're gonna take this, and I'm gonna start off with, with the Chain Gang chain, and maybe this will be long enough up. Again, I'm not sure, but anyways, let's go ahead and start this process. All right, guys, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to detach the little lock pendant right here. So what we're going to do is kind of cut a little bit right here off the side, so we'll have a little bit of extra. You don't want to cut too close because if you cut too close, then you may end up damaging it. I actually have m multiple. See, I'll probably just start off like this right here, but I have multiples of these lock chains, so it really doesn't matter if I screwed it up. I could actually just redo it, but I don't want to have to do that. So there's the extra chain part right there. And what we're going to do now is kind of just snip off this extra chain, get it down lower to the lock. So we're not going to be able to get it perfect. I may actually use my, uh, you can use my Dremel or a Dremel or some sandpaper to like get it as clo like closer as possible. But uh, we're just going to come in right here and snip off a little bit extra. And I'm going to try my best to get this on camera. Uh, right here, we're just going to snip off a little bit extra right there and then do the same thing on the other side and after we snip off that, we will move on to the next step. So getting it closer uh, right there should be perfect. So cutting that off, so you guys now will see that we don't have that much chain left. We're down to almost just a pendant lock, which is what we want. I don't know what I'll do with these extra chain pieces. We'll just put it on the table over here. So there is the little lock pendant, and now what I may do is come in and clean it up a little bit with the scissors. I don't think I'll be able to get that on camera, but just kind of go really slow with it, you know, taking off and snipping off little pieces of that, that, uh, that extra plastic right there, because you don't want that showing up, because if you put this on the lock or on the chain, it's going to be noticeable. So you want to get it as much as just the pendant itself, but uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like after I snip off this extra stuff. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like when it's all said and done. Again, it's not perfect by any means, but it's a lot better than it was when we first started. So there is the tiny locket. Now we're going to move on to the chain itself and cutting it up to exactly what we want. So we've cut down that excess. We have our hole established. So now all we have to do is cut up our chain. All right, guys, so here is the chain. You guys will see what I'm talking about here. One of them has to be the clasp, and one of them has to be where the lock actually is. So it's actually going to be really, really difficult, and I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to do this. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to snip one side, and we're going to have to connect it. So we're going to have to snip this, run it through this tiny hole over here, then use the pliers to manipulate that uh, that sterling silver or whatever the hell this, this material is to close it off so that it's a circle, like a necklace. And then we'll have to come back to the middle portion of the necklace, cut one of these little clasps in half, and then run the run that little loop through the locket, and then secure it back in its place with pliers, which I really have no idea how the hell I'm going to do that now that I'm filming this. Anyways, the first order of business is going to be cutting this little piece in half, so we're going to just get the little tip of it right here and cut that in half, and hopefully it doesn't snip my finger off. All right, so we got it, there we go, it's cut in half now. Now we're going to run this around and we're going to run that line through that tiny little hole right here at the end. All right, guys, this is what we're looking at when you clasp it together. So there it is. It's pretty small. Again, um, I'm going to put it around the neck of Cena just to see how big it is. I feel like it's going to barely go over his neck, but we'll go ahead and check it. All right, guys, here is Cena, and you guys will see. I think it looks pretty good. I thought it was going to be too small, but I feel like that's perfect size, actually. I think I nailed that as far as the sizes goes. I mean, I, I didn't personally pick out this size. This is just what was left of the chain after making the chain game pendant. So I think this per worked out perfectly. Now what we're going to do is do the second part where I'm going to cut it again, and we're going to repeat that same process, but instead of sticking it through a hole in the chain link, we're going to actually stick it through the hole of this pendant lock and see if uh, indeed we can get it get it done. Alright guys, so looking at it, you guys will see that the top portion where it loops around on the back of the neck is right here where this big circle is. Uh, so where my index finger is right here. So I feel like the best part to put the, the pendant on would be this bigger loop right here at the dead middle, right there between the two smaller ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to snip this part right here where my index finger is right there. And we're going to snip that in half. We're going to hold it in position. We're going to take the lock, run it through there. Hopefully, maybe I can get it on camera. 
Um, we'll have to see about that though, because that hole is actually much bigger than the one I had to run it through um, on the back here for the back loop. So we're gonna run it there, and we're gonna stick that through the hoop, and then uh, use our pliers to you know get it shut. I have some super glue on the side just in case, but I didn't have to use that for the chain gang pendant, so I don't want to use it here. But we're gonna try that now, and uh, I want to make sure I get this in the right position because I want to cut it in the exact spot that I want and not have any problems here. So that is where it's gonna hang, and right there is where I want it, that bottom piece. All right, I think I have it right here, right here on the edge. And what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna do just like we did on the uh, on the back clasp, and we're just gonna cut this in half right here. All right, guys, so you heard it off camera. I'm sorry I didn't get it on there, but you guys heard the noise and everything. So there it is, snipped in half. Now all we have to do is turn it a little bit, and now all we have to do is run that through the lock. So we have our lock here, and we're going to run this through the hole here. Again, should be pretty easy. Uh, let's make sure we get it on the front side, the, the side that looks better. And I think this side looks a whole lot better. So we're I guess it doesn't matter because we're going to be flipping it anyway. But there we go. Running the lock onto the pendant now. Uh, we have to hold that in position. So we have to get this through here. Not only do we have to get it through here, but we have, to, we have to run it through here and then we have to take our pliers and we have to close off that gap. That way it doesn't slip off or anything like that. So we're gonna run it through and then I may actually be able to just squeeze it, but I, I don't know, I kinda wanna use the pliers. Or you can, you, I guess you could squeeze it and then you can use your pliers to uh, make sure that it's squeezed like Orange Cassidy. Now it completely came off. Now I gotta fix it. But you guys see what I'm talking about. You see you run it through there and then you'll close off the gap. Now I'm gonna have to off camera run the, the smaller holes back through here and then re-put the pendant back on. And there we go guys, I finally got it. So I had to run that back through there. So I had to take the, the little clasp we made on the front here for the pendant and run it back through those smaller holes. But now it is complete. And you guys will see there it is in all of its glory. Um, it may need to be loosened up a little bit on the front there because it kind of has like a tilt to it. So it's not as free range as I'd like. Um, you guys can see how it's kind of cockeyed there. But that is the main point. That's the main idea. You guys will see I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to loosen up that little clasp there so it'll fall a little bit more freely. But let's go ahead and add it to the John Cena figure, see what the hell this looks like. So adding Sir Cena here, dubbing him, and boom, there we go. There is the chain locket on his neck, and again, it, it doesn't hang as freely as I'd like. I mean, that, that looks better. That looks a lot better than, than I thought it would there. But uh, it, it works out. Again, I'll have to loosen that up, but I like it. I like it a lot, and it worked out. It worked out exactly how it was supposed to. And this actually turned into a full-fledged uh, tutorial. I wasn't even going to show you the guy, show you guys the process on how to do it, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad that I got to get that on camera for you guys. And you guys will see now, it, you know, it free roams a whole lot better. It's not just a stiff piece of trash plastic that's stuck on his neck. It will actually hang. It'll actually be loose, and you guys can actually hit your head, figures over the head with it. You know, refs turn or back is turned. Hit him in the back of the head with the chain, knock him out cold, and uh, win the matchup. But that is going to do it for this tutorial, guys. There it is. You guys saw the chain gang pin. We're going to throw it over his neck here and then we're going to end this video so there it is uh, we got two chains made and I hope you guys did enjoy this video or tutorial if you guys learned something comment down below leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure tutorials and epic videos follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys and I will see you guys in the next video thank you